I want to go now to uh, Joan Biskupic because the Supreme Court, Joan, has rejected Jack Smith's request for justices to hear the Trump immunity dispute. Take us through this. Yeah, Brianna, we just got a one sentence order without any recorded vote or explanation. They have denied Jack Smith's request for immediate consideration of the claim that Donald Trump should be immune from criminal prosecution for interfering with the 2020 election, trying to disenfranchise millions of voters. The special counsel, Jack Smith, had laid out a case for why it was compelling for the Supreme Court to decide this sooner rather than later. And just a second ago, the Supreme Court denied it, again, with no recorded vote or explanation. It means that this case now stays in a lower appellate court. It could take now months before it gets back to the Supreme Court. It means that the trial of Donald Trump that was supposed to start March 4th certainly will not start on March 4th. That is huge. Yeah, yeah, so Joan, what we're talking about here is that this is now going to go through the normal, normal appellate process and it'll go to the Court of Appeals and that process will play out and then maybe it might go to the Supreme Court after that. But for all intents and purposes, this, this is a, a, a log jam, a legal log jam, I suppose, in the way of that March start date, as you were saying. That's absolutely true. And Jack Smith, on behalf of the federal government, had said, Supreme Court, you're going to have to resolve this sooner rather than later. Please come in now uh, to do this quickly. And the court has said no. It, and it, it, as I said, no explanation. Just, uh, you know, obviously the implication is that Jack Smith, the federal government, is going to have to go through the usual hoops of the lower court. Now, that is what is standard procedure, but what the special counsel had tried to argue was that this case was so compelling, so important to have a former president held accountable for actions from the 2020 election. Uh, he did not invoke the 2024 election, but here we are right on the eve of that. Uh, and this now, this trial of former President Donald Trump and all the related proceedings are just going to go right through to the summer. And who knows if it's just going to bump right up against the November election. Let's remind people, Joan, what's at the heart of this, which is this question of whether Donald Trump had presidential immunity in his actions surrounding the election. Yeah, the, the issue is that, you know, uh, Jack Smith had charged him with four four felony counts, you know, for the interference with the um, with the 2020 election, everything up to, you know, the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, and what Donald Trump had said is that he should be immune from this kind of criminal prosecution because any actions taken were part of his official actions. And a lower court trial judge rejected that, said, you know, essentially no, no one is above a law, the law, especially the president, the former president in this case. And that was the, uh, the situation that Jack Smith tried to emphasize, is that no one should be above the law, especially a man who tried to, you know, uh, defy the Constitution and perpetuate his time in office. Yeah, and what's fascinating about all this, Joan, and, and we're uh, getting Evan Perez and Jeff Zeleny to join us Great. on set with us as well. But the other part of this, Joan, which is fascinating is we just got this new story out of the Detroit News in the last 24 hours where there are new revelations, or at least the revelations are on audio now, that Donald Trump and the chair of the RNC, uh, Ronna McDaniel, were uh, trying to pressure uh, those election workers in Wayne County to not certify the election results uh, in that county. And this uh, feeds right into Jack Smith's case that the, the then president was not acting as the president of the United States. He was just trying to cling on to cling to power. Yes, and you know, yeah. Jack Smith made a big point about the former president trying to disenfranchise millions of voters, and there was a situation right there in Detroit, Michigan. Again, right. allegations, but those, allegations, and those will be yeah. those will be tested in trial. But now that trial, where both sides would be able to present their case, is now months away. And Evan, what's your uh, takeaway from this? I mean, this this came down pretty quickly, but if I'm not mistaken, Jack Smith, he asked once and he sort of asked again to say, hey, we really need you to, to give us something on this. And the right. Supreme Court well, said, the, OK. Well, yeah. the Supreme yeah. Court actually told, gave these very tight deadlines to both sides to weigh in. Uh, before making this decision, it was clear that there at least somebody, uh, per John Roberts and, and perhaps uh, some some others on the on the court were did want to at least take a look at this and decide whether to 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 consider this full request. And 
what we see here now is that they're saying, well, you know, the, we also know that obviously the appeals court had also decided to move very quickly. They set very tight deadlines and they have scheduled January 9th for oral arguments mm. on these very same questions. So it's, vi it's, it's quite possible that uh, people, uh, the, uh, some of the other justices thought, well, let's wait for that. But let me just say this. Um, you know, Smith makes a, a, a pretty strong argument here that this case, if you compare it to precedent, right, which is uh, 1974, the Nixon case, and, and, and those urgent questions that were being uh, put before the court at that point, they, they took a look at that case, they expedited it, they skipped over the appellate process, they heard that case in two months, and they rendered a decision in 16 days after oral arguments. So that, what, what, what Jack Smith said in, in, uh, in his uh, request, he says here the stakes are at least as high, if not higher, for a resolution to come because obviously we have the, we all know the the, the, the electoral calendar we know the the ballots uh, are being printed literally uh, in the next couple of weeks and so the question that is before this court is really really urgent so what this means guys I think you know clearly the, the March 4th trial is in grave danger of actually happening at that <coughs> point um, it's most likely not going to be anywhere near there because of this process but again you know these courts can act quickly if they choose to do so I do Jeff want to look at this through a political lens but first I just want to bring in Ellie Honing real quick sure. because we do have him on the phone and we should certainly talk about the legal side of this before we look at it through that political lens it, it's important to note Ellie and I wonder if you think this may have had some bearing on what the Supreme Court decided. In fairness, it is a very short ruling here. We do not know what the, the reasoning behind it. But Jack Smith, as he was explaining why he wanted this expedited, he did not give a specific reason in his filing other than to talk about really uh, the public interest. The policy here was he couldn't invoke the 2024 election, although I think when a lot of people look at this, they say, well, maybe it should have been expedited because maybe there should be a trial before the election so that people who are voting yes or no on Donald Trump, you know, have a full picture of what's going on here. Do you think that that had a bearing, uh, his argument that maybe was sort of maybe not as strong as it could have been? Well, Brianna, I think that's exactly the biggest weakness in Jack Smith's argument that this needed to be expedited. Let's remember, the, per the party who was asking the Supreme Court to do something unusual here was Jack Smith. He was saying, we want to skip the Court of Appeals, which now will not happen. The next step will be the Court of Appeals. But Jack Smith was saying, we want to skip the Court of Appeals and have you, Supreme Court, take this case immediately. And if you're going to make that request, legally, you, Jack Smith, bear the burden of explaining specifically why there's a need for speed here. Jack Smith, because he has been unwilling and remains unwilling to acknowledge that he wants to try this case before the election, instead was left, if you look at his briefs, to argue these sort of vague generalities about speed is good and delay is bad and public interest. But he never says, because we need to get this in before the election. And in his brief, Donald Trump's lawyers attack that. They say all that Jack Smith has offered up here is generalities that would apply to any case. They do not offer a specific reason. Uh, Brianna, as you say, we don't know the exact reason why the Supreme Court has turned this down for now, but it is really important to keep in mind. The next step here will be the Court of Appeals. Donald Trump lost his immunity argument at the district court, the trial court. He will now get to go to the Court of Appeals. That will take a few weeks. As Evan said, they've set a very quick briefing schedule, and then the Supreme Court might take it then. This does not mean the Supreme Court will never take this case. It just means they're going to have the Court of Appeals take it first. And I think what this does, as Evan said, this makes the March 4th trial date almost impossible to hold. I think this means that trial date is going to be pushed back, perhaps substantially. And Joan, I know you're still with us and you want to respond to what Ellie is saying, but it sounds as though, I mean, we're not getting a resolution on the immunity issue. We're just getting an issue on whether this is going to be expedited. That's exactly right. Yeah. And I think the Supreme Court eventually is going to have to decide this. The Supreme Court is the only bench that can decide this fully. Mm. And I would just respond to what Ellie said about um, the Trump lawyer's arguments. Uh, Jack Smith had uh, a chance to come back and respond to uh, Trump's 
lawyers claims that he wasn't specific enough and he did not even try to take that on what he wanted to take on was the very important uh, first principles question here uh, involving the separation of powers involving uh, presidential a presidential shield from criminal prosecution and he likened it to some of the weightiest issues out there essentially saying I don't need is you know the message was I don't need to be specific on why this is such a big question of a former president who is trying to uh, elude accountability for his actions and we need an answer on that sooner rather than later and finally Jim to your your initial point there is no way this doesn't doesn't go back to the U.S. Supreme Court yeah. because no matter what the um, appellate court does the Supreme Court's going to have to resolve this once and for all in this case of Donald Trump.